Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Introduction to Mathematical Statistics. We're in Chapter 5, Limiting Distributions. And this is Part 2 in this playlist, or this little mini-series, Chapter 5. And we left off with this example. So it's an example of limiting distributions. So let's consider a random sample of size n from a distribution with CDF capital F of x to be this. This is for all x that are in the real number line. So does the largest order statistic, yn, have a limiting distribution? So let's investigate that. First, let's find the CDF of the largest order statistic and then take its limit. So here's the CDF. It's the probability that the maximum is less than some value y. And if the maximum is less than that, then every observation in our sample has to be less than this. So it's the product of the x's less than, or, you know, the product of the probability of each x being less than y. But this is just the CDF of x, which was defined as this up here. So we just plug in y. And now there's no index here, so we're multiplying it in times. And so that's what the n and the exponent is. And so this is the CDF. Now let's take the limiting distribution. So we take the limit of this CDF, which is the limit of this. And notice that this is always more than 1. And then if we take that to denominator, then the, it's 1 over something that blows up to infinity, and it goes to 0. Now, note that this is absolutely not a CDF, since it does not approach 1 as y goes to infinity. So it, it doesn't have a limiting CDF or the limiting distribution of the CDF is not a CDF. So let's look at some other quantity. So let's look at does the largest order statistic minus the log of n. So y n log n have a limiting distribution. If so, what is it? So let's look at it. So here's the CDF of this random variable. So it's the probability this random variable is less than y. Add log n to both sides. So the Largest order statistic is less than y plus log n. That means every xi has to be less than that. So it's the product of those. That's the CDF. So we plug in this value into the CDF, which is this. And then there's no index here. So it's the product n times. That's what that exponent is. So this is the CDF of this random variable, you know, the maximum minus log n. So let's find the limiting distribution. So we take the limit as n go to, goes to infinity, but we rewrite this e. So we distribute the negative sign, and we take the e to the minus log n to the denominator. But e to the log n is just n. And then this is a, the famous limiting distribution. that It's e raised to the power of e to the minus y minus 1. And so this is it. So note that this is a CDF. As you let y go to infinity, this approaches 1, as a CDF should be. And if it goes to negative infinity, it goes to 0. So here's the definition. A sequence of random variables, y1, y2, is said to, be, uh, is said to converge stochastically to a constant if it has a limiting distribution that is degenerate at y equal c. Remember, degenerate was defined in, in the first video of this series. So let's look at some examples. So let x1 through xn be independent Bernoulli random variables. That means xi is a binomial with n equal 1 p, or we could just say Bernoulli p, and let y n be this sum. Now show that the sequence yn, yn converges stochastically to a constant c as n goes to infinity. Now we're going to use Chebyshev's inequality. And in Chebyshev's inequality, we will look at the mean and the variance of yn. So let's do that before we get to this formula. If we look at the expected value of yn, it means it's expected value of this. And it's a linear operator, so it goes into this term. Expected value of xi or Bernoulli is just pi, so pi minus pi is zero. So the expected value of yn is zero. 
Now the variance of yn, since these are independent random variables, it just goes into this uh, fraction. And constants don't play a part of it. And so it's just the variance of xi. But the n comes out squared, and the variance of a Bernoulli is p times q, or p times 1 minus p. So now let's look at Chevsy-Sev's inequality, which is this. So yn minus the mean, minus 0. That's what we want to show that it converges stochastically to. Uh, that we're looking at the probability that that's greater than some epsilon. Well, according to Chevy-Sev's inequality, that's the expected value of this quantity, the, the, the expected value of this quantity squared, which is the variance, and then it's this is squared. Well, the variance we said was pi 1 minus pi over n squared. If we look at this, right, the epsilon is not indexed, so it comes out of this sum, or you know, or, you know, this is the variance. Now, let's look at this for a second. So, this sum is hard to evaluate, but let's plug in. And remember, pi goes from zero to one. So let's plug in values that maximize this, which is one half. So if pi equal one half maximizes this sum, so this quantity is always bigger than this, or, or greater than or equal to it. But the one fourth can come out, and then we have this sum. Notice there's no index, so we're summing this n times, so we get one of those n's cancels with that, and we're left with this quantity. So this quantity, this probability, is this. Now, some people like the Chevy-Sev's inequality the other way, which is the probability that this is less than epsilon is going to be greater than or equal to 1 minus the variance of this over epsilon. Oh, that should be squared. Dang it. So, and, and then we just go through the same math with the variance of this was this, it's max. We put in it's maximized, which means that, that this sum is minimum, right? This value is larger than that, but we're subtracting it. So it, it reduces it. Then the one fourth can come out front. The sum, we get this. Now let's look at the limits of these. So the limit of this probability is the limit of this, right? We've derived it. But this goes to zero. And if we look at the limit of, if you like Chevy-Chev's inequality in this form, the limit of this probability, which is the limit of this, and this goes to zero, so it goes to one. So if we letting epsilon go to zero implies that yn is a degenerate distribution at the value y equals zero, right? So this gets arbitrarily close to zero which there's no chance that it will be greater than, than some small value epsilon. There, you know, the probability is, is limits to zero. So let's look at the central limit theorem. Well, that's this section. Now, the first theorem is not the central limit theorem, but it's, it's something in the development towards the central limit theorem. So let y1, y2 be a sequence of random variables with respective CDFs, capital G1 of y, G2 of y, and the moment generated functions, M1 of y, M2 of y, etc. Now notice that these are indexed, G1, G2, M1, M2. Now if MT, remember this is not indexed, is the moment generated function of a CDF G of y, which is not indexed, and if the the limit of the index moment generating functions is this m of t, and that's for all t in a little open interval around zero, then the limiting CDFs converge to this CDF g of m, or g of t, and that's for all continuity points of g. So g is the CDF for the distribution that has this m of t as a moment generating function. And so this is another fantastic way to find the limiting distribution of, of random variables. We look at the limiting, uh, you know, the asymptotic behavior of the moment generating functions. That tells us about the limiting distribution of the CDFs. So let's look at an example. Suppose that yi is uh, standard normal and that the z1, z2 are independent. Use the moment generating functions to find the limiting distribution of this random variable. So, and, 
And so the moment generating function zi is a standard normal. So that is this. This is the moment generating of a standard normal. So that now w, which is this, and we're going to rewrite it in a little uh, more convenient form, which is this. That's just algebra. So let's look at the moment generating function of mw. So mw is expected value of e to the t times w. That's the definition of a moment generating function. But let's plug in what w is, which is this. Let's distribute the t, distribute the sum, and then take any take out anything that's not a random variable. And that's this piece right here. So that t goes into here, and then we're summing it n times. One of the n's cancels, and we're left with this. Now, this expected value is, is what's left. Now, this sum means we can write this as the e to the t, you know, as a product of these exponentials. And since they're all independent, that's the product of each of these e, I, e raised to these t over square root of n z i. But this looks like the moment generating function. Oh, the z's are the you know have to do with the the standard normal. So this is actually the moment generating function of z i. But we're plugging in t to the square root of n for just t. But each of these moment generating functions is this right here. You know, remember we evaluated, we plugged in t to the square root of n, and we get this. There's no index, so we get n of them, and that's that n goes away, and we're left with this. Now let's evaluate that. Let n go to infinity. So the limiting uh, moment, the limit of the moment generating function. So the limit as n goes to infinity of this moment generating function of this random variable w n. So it's the limit of the, oh, it shouldn't be an equal to sign there, which is the limit of this. And notice that this goes to zero. So e to the zero is one, and we're just left with this variable right here, which is the moment generating function of a standard normal, standard normal random variable. So that tells us that since the moment generating function is limited to a standard normal random variable, that says the distribution, Wn, limits and distribution to a standard normal distribution and that's what we wanted to show okay so i'm at the end of page six which i wanted my goal was to cover three pages of video so i better stop i hope you enjoyed this i sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye